Hey, welcome to the new movie thing show. My name is Philip DeFranco. Oh, I'm Steve Zaragoza. And we just watched the midnight release of Men in Black 3. Why didn't you let me sleep? So this is the third Men in Black movie about two galaxy defending dudes that work for a secret government agency that protect the world from aliens. And in this movie, there's time travel, which is awesome. And we've got Josh Brolin playing young K and all sorts of cool, awesome alien defending Men in Black awesomeness. And guys, so quickie review, if you're running to the theater right now, you don't have enough time to watch this whole video, mine is, I really liked it. And before I give you my quickie review, I gotta let you know that I was a former employee at Sony Pictures, but that does not make my review biased. I actually liked the movie, I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, and actually the whole reason we're even seeing the midnight showing is Steve is coming here to work at SourceFed. He's quitting his other job, but uh, he has work tomorrow. So you start with Will Smith, awesome guy, he's really funny, he has a few places where his jokes don't hit, but I don't think it's really his fault. The only thing I was worried about with Will Smith, because I love most of his movies, is that he uh, took this movie, I heard, because he just wanted to do a time travel movie, and I was like, that's a terrible reason to make a third movie. <laughs> we also have Tommy Lee Jones, who I thought was fantastic in the film, although he wasn't in it very much, because we go into the time travel aspect, and we have Josh Brolin playing young, Tommy Lee Jones, and I thought he was fantastic. Amazing. Yeah. He was amazing. I mean, yeah, Tommy Lee kind of bookends it without, you know, kind of ruining the story, but Brolin's awesome. I know, he just nailed the Tommy Lee Jones impression. Right, yeah, and I mean, I think if, if you talk about, like, the chemistry, Will Smith, Brolin, yeah. they, they work really well together, but if anything, Brolin shines more than Will Smith, who, I mean, is the star of the series. And yeah, I was really excited to like a movie because I was so scared. <laughs> I was, like, going in, I was like, please, <laughs> One, I just don't want to see another movie that I don't enjoy. Two, I don't want to be the, the snarky guy that's like, I don't like anything. And it was really, really fun. Kind of a, in between a turn off your brain transformers and something that actually has script writing to it. And another aspect I enjoyed was the time travel aspect. Yeah. I know I keep mentioning it, but I'm a big time travel nerd. I love my Back to the Future, I love my 12 Monkeys, my Bill and Ted movies. And so, I don't know, I just thought that this really kind of fits into the category of like cool time travel movies. And the time travel, <laughs> I mean, it really was unique. I, I have my own theory. <laughs> as far as time travel, which is that if time travel did exist, it's already happened. If someone was like, I'm gonna go back and kill Hitler, well, either one, they failed, or two, uh, they replaced it with another baby Hitler. Ting. <laughs> <laughs> so, check this shit out. This is a theory. This people, is what happens when we go to midnight show. People are saying that the Large Hadron Collider, once it like does what it's supposed to do, is gonna actually open up the other end of like time. So anybody in the future from the Hadron Collider opening to any time <laughs> after that <laughs> can now look into our past. But that's as far back as they can go. I'm f crazy about this. Shit. God damn it, Bill! And I mean, with this movie, I mean, the, the past two reviews I've talked about hearts. But this movie, uh, it was slapsticky, it was funny. Um, I felt like you could probably bring like a 10 year old and they would they would laugh and then you could have like a 40 year old uh, understand the heart at the end of the story and be emotionally impacted. And so I think it, it hit really broad and that was one of the reasons I love the movie as well. Avid Green's boobs. <laughs> And that brings us to the 3 a.m. version of Love It and Hate It. Boom. Back into a heart. Time, Time travel. travel. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the part where we talk about what we love most, hated most about the movie. My, uh, my love it is probably the character Griff. He relates to time travel. He's just kind of a lovable character and, uh, and he really just, he puts that heart in that I love so much. And the hate it would either be one of two things. One, I thought that we were going to the 3D movie, but it turns out, uh, no, uh, we went to Men in Black 3D, D. which stands for digital. Uh, so fuck you, AMC. Yeah. And two, the second thing that was kind of nitpicky was I felt during some scenes, I, I could really, really tell it was green screen. I'm not talking about like Shutter Island on the water kind of fucked up green screen. Some Peter of you Jackson's might... King Kong green screen. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just like, there were moments where you were like, Will Smith was like fake running and I was like, did they not have a big green screen? Did they, they were like, they ran out of the budget because they hit $375 million. And they, they had a buddy with a green in his garage. Just run in place. It's cool. My love it was the fact that Jermaine Clement was the bad guy. I absolutely love Jermaine from Flight of the Concords. I can't believe you didn't know it was I him. I didn't realize. To be fair though, he is pretty covered up. He's got those Elton Johns going on. And my hate it was the fact that Phil spilled his water halfway <laughs> through the movie and I didn't know what was going on. Next thing I know, my feet are getting soaked down on the seat 
And I'm like, what's going on here? And then I start tapping my feet a little bit and I hear a little splishy splash, like I'm taking a bath. And my feet have soaked up all of Phil's water that he spilled. Okay, but there has to be something said that you just dealt with it for an hour and a half. I and didn't move. I didn't know there was water on the floor, man. But what else could it have been? But I didn't know until I was like, my feet are kind of cold. What's going on here? This must be Phil's water I'm drinking through my feet right now. Did you hate anything about the movie? The fact that they brought in the great Bill Hader, who's yeah. a fantastic improv comedian, and they didn't quite use him to his full potential. And yeah, it, it seemed like you bring in an improv guy, and, and it looked like he probably tried a few improv lines, and they were like, let's just go with the script. And it, right. it, the scene kind of falls flat. And that does bring us to the final review segment area. You have a different method than I do yours. I do. I give movies Ewok hugs, and I want to give this movie four out of five, actually. Yeah. I want to hug the hell out of this movie. Yeah. Bill? <laughs> And my scale is on a don't watch rental matinee or full price. For this, I would say full price. Uh, we didn't get to see it in 3D once again. I, I, I probably will go back and watch it in 3D. I really, really enjoyed it. I know that I'm gonna go again with friends. Thanks again for watching the new Movie Thing Show, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I know, I had a fantastic fucking time, Oh Phil. man, I had so much fun pouring water on your feet. How dare you, was it a joke? You knew you were doing it? No, but I thought it fell into the seat in front, not onto it you. It was a lake around my <laughs> shoes. So next week in theaters, we've got Snow White and the Huntsman and Piranha 3 Double D. And uh, maybe you guys can let us know which one you would want us to review. Hey guys, on that note, uh, my name is Philip DeFranco. I am going to leave and go back into the past and ask you why you're going to give The Dictator the same review as Men in Black 3, because that's fucking crazy. What do you mean? I enjoyed both movies. Is there anything wrong with that? I'm Steve Zaragoza and I enjoy a lot of movies. <laughs> Time travel. <laughs> We're doggy!